Welcome to this podcast is making me thirsty. The number one destination for Seinfeld fans. This is two up and two down. Here's our producer, Chris, to start us off. Welcome back to another episode of two up and two down. Today's episode is the secret code uh, season seven episode. So Chris, let's start off with you. What's your uh, first up? All right. My one up for the season seven written by Alec Berg and Jeff Schaefer, a secret code. First up is Jerry and George at the restaurant with Peterman. Um, obviously, Jerry coming up with a quick-witted excuse to get out of there and George just choking, which is very unlike George. But it's uh, – I, I get a giggle and a chuckle every time I watch it. Uh, I, again, I didn't like that they were together at that point. We'll get to that there in the downs. But George choking, unable to find an excuse is my first up for the secret code. Yes, definitely. Uh, I, I do like that, too. Uh, when George uh, reaches down and there's nothing there. Very good. All right, Tony, what's your first up? All right, you got a chuckle. What do you say? A chuckle and a giggle there? Uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> season seven, so we're not quite there yet, but we're getting there. And this one uh, teeters on, on both worlds, I think. Um I'm going to go, it's just a one-liner. It, it cracks me up every time. It's a, it's a quick one-liner, but I love, I love when George, uh, George says, <laughs> George goes, uh, I don't know anything about your cycles. I don't know what's going on down there. Love that line by George. Just kind of throws it out there to Susan. Just, I don't know what's going on your cycles. Uh, I don't know what's going on down there. Love that line. There's not a lot of this episode. I'm pulling out lines I like. Uh, I like that line. I laugh every time. I use that line a lot. Don't know. Don't know what's going on with your cycles. That's my uh, my first thumbs up. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Uh, so, Chris, let's uh, go back to you. What's your second up? Yeah, an episode like this, it's it's pulling on lines, and uh, I gotta echo that. Um, yes, yes. The last line I actually really enjoy when they're looking at the Peterman catalog and. <laughs> he, he he reads about it and says his name is Costanza. He killed my mother, and then the show just ends. So for me, you know, Peterman was a big up, and I could just picture him saying that in the catalog. Um, now keep in mind these aren't great ups. Uh, I want to I want to start with that, but there were a decent amount of ups. Surprisingly, when I watched this again, but um, I think. To Tony's point, I think the lines actually shined here. So I'm going with uh, that last line. He killed my mother as my second up for the secret code. Uh, very good, Chris. Yeah, I agree with that. This is an episode where you're pulling lines. Not a lot of great substance, but um, yeah, a good some good one-liners here and there. Uh, so, uh, Tony, what do you got for your uh, second up? Yeah, my second up is is it's a solid scene. Uh, for me, it's probably the best scene in the whole in the whole episode. Uh, O'Hara touched on the getting out of the dinner. Also, a pretty good scene. But I think my favorite scene of this episode is Kramer guessing George's code. Just great Kramer, great George. George is sweating. You can tell George doesn't doesn't like it. Kramer's already hitting on it quickly. What kind of man are you? Temptations and what tempts you and you're portly and he's right at it. He guesses it. And that's just per perfect Kramer right there. Kramer always cuts at a chase. Uh, he really, uh, really, uh, you know, nails George in a second and really gets the code. So that's my second thumbs up is the scene where Kramer guesses George's code Bosco. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. That's a, it's a great scene. Uh, I actually think uh, Kramer, you know, carries the show. If, if it wasn't for Kramer, you're probably not tuning back into this episode again, in my opinion. Uh, so, uh, Chris, uh, let's talk about Downs now. What's your first one? Well, I have a lot, but since you said that, I'm going to go against the curve here because I think the Kramer storyline was not solid. Uh, the George thing, a little absurd, him picking Bosco. Like, who, who, Who's going to get someone's code, you know? Although I did like, actually, believe it or not, when Jerry says his code was Jarrell, uh, Superman's father. But Kramer, Kramer's storyline here with the directions and the firehouse, like, re just a, a big miss for me. Uh, you know, him, again, the, it's cartoonish. He's on the top of the thing with the steering wheel. And, again, I can see a lot of Pink Hat fans loving that. Uh, but for me... That's not Kramer. It's just a little too cartoonish, a little off. 
a little forced. And that's when, you know, that's that's season seven. That's that's where we're getting. So the Kramer storyline, I, I didn't love. So that is my first uh, down of the episode. OK, yeah, we're here to uh, discuss ups and downs and uh, we all have our own. So, uh, Tony, what's your first one? Yeah, I couldn't agree more on that one, by the way. I won't use it. Uh, I'm going to go with Jerry's storyline. I, 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 I never liked Jerry's storyline in this episode. It's, it's just the foot falling asleep twice, the leaping Larry, the walking around, the girl laughs. I, I mean, the whole thing was forced with the whole making fun of the guy. I uh, didn't like Jerry's storyline at all, which was which was more than half the episode, probably. If you think about it, it ties into Kramer's even so. Uh, so there, there you go. It's even a double whammy there. But <laughs> overall, the the Jerry storyline, uh, just the whole foot falling asleep, uh, leaping Larry's whole uh, on fire, everything else that goes along with it. The, uh, you know, he's he's mocking him and everything else. Uh, Jerry just does not deliver in this episode. That's a down. Uh, and not only that, w- why is leaping Larry? Asking Jerry for the scanner. Why? Why is he even there? Yeah, uh, we can go on and on about that. I mean, what are we even doing? Leaping Larry doing a? Why is Jerry doing a promo for Leaping Larry for crying out loud? Is he, he's at that level now. All he's doing a local commercial, the crazy Eddie. Who knows? I yeah, not good. So uh, Chris, back to you. Uh, what's what do you got for your other down? Yeah, I mean, Tony made a great point here. He used the word forced, and I feel like this whole episode is forced. Um, I, I wrote that down here. Like Peterman eating with Jerry and George, forced. Like, wh- why are they doing that? Like, and the whole forget about Elaine. When we get to Elaine, I might leave that for Tony. But you know, the whole Fred Stoller, like, yeah, just a big miss. But why? Why would Elaine make Jerry and why would George come to that dinner just because? I mean, just bothered me. I mean. It was a funny scene after them getting out of it fine, but why would they be eating in the first place? And then George, just to carry on with that, why would he go to Peterman's mom's house? Get out of there. <laughs> and he you know, sleeps over? Again, the writing, listen, I love Berg and Schaefer, but this one, this one was a bit of a miss. Uh, again, that shift, as we talked about, uh, but yeah, I mean, the, just the forced nature of a lot of the situations and it almost they, they forced them tying these stories together too much. So that's my big issue and my uh, my second down. All right. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Uh, so, Tony, let's go to you. What do you think is uh, or what do you have for your next? Yeah, I mean, I, I all these are valid points, valid, valid points. Uh, it just. Just generally speaking, I agree. It was everything was forced uh, going down to the, the Kramer on the on the fire truck was probably the epitome of it, which was already brought up by Chris. So I'm going to go my second down and you touched on it is a lane with Stoller. The whole I mean, I only zeroed in on the first little the tic-tac-toe thing when the bathroom and all that. I mean, that really is what throws me off off the start. Uh, you know, you could take the whole thing, the whole storyline, if you'd like. Uh, what I wrote down as my as my down was Lee Harley Lee Harvey Oswald joke Elaine tells the tic tac toe behind them, uh, just bringing it back and then bringing it back again and then her going on the date with them and then kind of I'll give her the what the hell am I doing here because that's what we're all thinking why do we even do this scene at all I mean maybe that you know foreshadows the whole thing but uh, just yeah just Elaine Elaine storyline bad uh, Stoller you know. And what are you going to do there? The, the tic-tac-toe joke. And I mean, he basically was doing his stand-up, by the way. I'm pretty sure three of those jokes are in his stand-up yeah. act. They, they just gave it to him as something to do. He's a writer. Let's give Stoller something to do here. Throw him a bone. Uh, but you know, anyway. The other thing I like about Stoller is his in this episode, his last name is Yerkes, uh, friend of the right. show. Jim exactly. Jim. Yeah, yeah. Stealing Yerkes' uh, name from us. I don't like it either. Uh, so that's my thumbs down is really just a whole Elaine's entire storyline. And, uh, we'll get the grades here in a second. So, so yeah, let's, uh, wrap up, uh, the secret code with grades. Uh, Chris, let's start it off with your grade. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to spend too much time on the grade here. And it's interesting. I wrote a grade down yet. The more I talked about this episode, I don't think this grade stands up, but I'm, I'm going to stick with it because I, the episode wasn't as bad as I, first imagined uh again the 
George and Jerry getting together in the beginning and talking about the definition of selfish gave it a slight lift, slight lift. Um, Kramer defending Leaping Larry. But at the end of the day, you know, when we have downs from Kramer, from Jerry, from Elaine, it's not a strong episode. Uh, And it's season seven. Like I said, a lot of cartoonish stuff. It's a D plus. This is a D plus episode. Um, It could be lower than that. No way it'll be better than that. But on the rewatch, nothing was outlandishly outlandishly bad and that's where the f's come in but uh d plus for the uh for the secret code all right yeah i I can see that so uh a fair grade there in my opinion too so tony uh i gotta imagine you're gonna echo the same here i'm actually going a tad lower i'm going my grade on this is a d just just a straight up d uh I didn't even consider a D plus now that it's brought up, but I just think a D is solid. I mean, we ranked at 153. We both actually ranked at 153. It's bottom, 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 right? Bottom 25-ish. Um, I, I think, you know, to Harris' point, you're not getting better than a D plus. I went a step lower. I didn't even talk about the ending. I hate the ending with the guy in the in the ATM and Peterman, give me your car to George and give him the code, man. Like, I mean, yeah, you're going to get it because it's Peterman. Everyone loves Peterman's voice and delivery. Give him the code, man. I love, you know, that aside, the scene itself, I can't stand. Uh, you know, why, why is George got to give him the card? There's 400 people there. I mean, I know it's supposed to be funny. That's the whole idea here. But uh, this is a season seven that just, uh, as O'Hara mentioned, you got everyone's got, uh, you know, on their on their D game, right? They're, no one's on their A game, that's for sure. Um, you know, I, I don't even... I wrote down four ups and one of them is you got to love sports, right? So what are we doing here? Uh, I got to give this a solid D. Um, That's my grade for, uh, for the season seven secret code D. All right, guys. uh, Thanks again for another episode of two up and two down. Uh, Let's go on to the next one.